I just wanted to say that before I start this video I will be talking about issues relating to mental health such as anxiety, depression and suicide as well as other related issues so uh, by all means you don't have to watch this video if you don't feel comfortable but this video is ultimately designed to raise awareness of some of these issues as well as just me talking about some things related to what I've experienced so that's there as I say you don't have to watch this video if you don't want to. What is going on everyone? How are you doing? I hope you're doing good because it is good to feel good and this is another different video for me today so there's no outro, no intro, no background music, no quirky bits in this video. I wanted to talk, I've wanted to talk about this topic for a while and that is mental health. So with this month being November there is two things that I often notice and one of the first is Movember which is a charity that raises awareness for men's mental health issues as well as testicular cancer and prostate cancer and then there's also International Men's Day which falls on the 19th of November which just so happens to be my birthday. Um, but ultimately I want to talk about some topics relating to mental health and also I want to talk about my story and some of the things some of the things and some of the struggles that I've been through so I will get to that but before I begin there's often this perception of like you know those who are going through mental health problems are seen as you know weak and that those who are showing say their vulnerable side are how would I describe it you know going through some kind of phase or something and that is false many people go from mental health issues every year every day perhaps and you know it's not a sign of weakness it's not a sign of you know attention seeking or whatever these are real issues that people go through in fact with men's mental health some issues that I often notice so a few statistics here men are almost three times more likely to see a therapist when feeling worried or low men are far more likely to go missing than women and sleep rough, become dependent on alcohol and use drugs frequently. Some symptoms of depression are more common in men than in women and these include irritability, sudden anger, increased loss of control, risk taking and aggression. Men may be more likely to use drugs and alcohol as coping mechanisms for depression rather than talking about it. In 2017 nearly 6,000 suicides were recorded in Britain and of these, 75% of those were men, and the suicide is the largest cause of death for men under the age of 50. Higher rates of suicide are also found in minority communities, um, including gay men, war veterans, men from black, Asian, and minority ethnic backgrounds, and those of low incomes. Less well-off middle-aged men are particularly likely to die from suicide. And, and there are all sorts of statistics that are out there when it comes to men's mental health. But, and, um, you can look more into this in some of the links I'll have displayed below. Coming to me now, I recently put out an Instagram post a few days ago talking about my mental health struggles and while I've put it out on there I also thought it'd be best to kind of like put it into my own words in this video so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this might not be easy for me to talk about but I feel it's a necessary thing to talk about and also Ultimately, with this video, I want to raise awareness of men's mental health and also encourage people who are going through struggles to, you know, reach out and talk to somebody, you know, be open and honest about things. And, yeah. So here's my story. So before I get into my little story, um, I thought I'd just mention that throughout this video, I'm going to be looking back and forth between my notes. Um, just so I can keep my train of thought, if I lose what I'm talking about, I'll be like, oh, that's what I was talking about, so there, and quick sugar water, and let's get discussing. So, throughout the near two years of the COVID pandemic, I've been fortunate enough to continue working, and in fact, I remember when the first lockdown was announced back in March last year, I remember, obviously, it was said that, you know, if you are an essential worker, I guess the idea was you can continue working and because where I work is basically an essential job um, I, I kind of had no choice but to continue working really so I was fortunate in that place whereas those who worked in other sectors probably weren't as fortunate 
but ultimately throughout this period there have been a few points sticking out to me where I felt at my lowest for a variety of reasons. In fact, this, the first of these was in June of 2020, um, where I just worked a full week of shifts in which the vast majority of those I wouldn't stop for a break, so usually it'd be like an eight hour shift or whatever, and I, yeah, I wouldn't stop for a break for whatever reason, although saying that my reasons were I used to see myself as a bit of a perfectionist, so making sure, you know, deadlines were being met, everything was being, you know, everything I was doing in my workload was up to scratch, and if I always said to myself that, you know, if I ever left the shop in, like, you know, a really rubbish place or something, that looks bad on me. And ultimately, some of those things got to me, and, like, I always felt the need to, you know, be delivering, you know, my best of, my best, my absolute best results. And I remember, like, just a few days after this week of working, I remember just having a complete breakdown in front of my family just because I just felt like, you know, work was getting to me. I felt really overwhelmed. And then I remember going to work that day and also just having a breakdown in front of my boss and just telling her how I felt. And it wasn't easy. Um, I felt like a few things were getting to me. And I said to her, you know, in a few weeks' time, I just want a week off to just kind of, like, you know, switch off and, you know, get myself back up to a good kind of, like, you know, mental spot, if that makes sense. So, ultimately, it was July when I had this week off, and I remember it was, like, you know, the few lockdown restrictions were being eased out. And, you know, for example, we were being allowed to see people again, and... I remember seeing some of my friends during this week for like the first time in a long time in, before the lockdown started and that felt really nice to you know really connect with them again and just have some good conversations and whatnot so that felt lovely. The second was in September of that same year and I had a week and a half off that I had between September, the end of September and leading into October and originally during this period, I was originally going to be heading to Disneyland Paris with a few friends. But ultimately I didn't go and I had like, you know, flights booked and everything. Um, I think my biggest worry was just relating to the pandemic again. And like, you know, I think also at the time, like, you know, you know, travel wasn't the norm. So, and also this was before the vaccine came out. So... Obviously, if you travel to a place, when you come back, you would have to quarantine, and I don't, f I think I was not particularly looking forward to doing that myself, but I think with this whole thing overall, I don't re necessarily regret the decision of not going, but I missed a nice chance to be with my friends, and as a result of that, I felt quite low at this period, like, almost depressed, really. Um, it was also during this period where my nana had her second diagnosis of cancer and during which, throughout the pandemic, as I've discussed before, I wasn't allowed to see her and, like, you know, you know, you couldn't go to another person's house or what, for whatever reason, like, you know, at multiple points during this period. But yeah, so my nana had a cancer diagnosis and as a result of that my mum would go to be with her to make sure you know, she was well looked after and whatnot, and, you know, helped her through her cancer diagnosis. So it ultimately meant not seeing my mum throughout a lot throughout this period. And also it was around this period where the idea of moving up here to North Yorkshire was first discussed with my parents. And I was initially reluctant about moving, but mainly because, you know, I liked where I worked and, you know, I didn't want to just suddenly change everything so suddenly. But ultimately, I did come to the decision that I wanted to go through with this, mainly because, you know, a fresh start and all sorts would probably do us all the world of good. But I guess one of the reasons that led me to going through with this was because somebody had said something behind my back about me struggling with this whole process because of me having Asperger's. And I remember catching wind, so, so this person spoke to my mum about this. And then I caught wind of this conversation from my mum, 
and then when I found out what this person had said, I ultimately chose to stick up for myself and, you know, mention to my mention to this person, you know, all sorts of things that I've done despite me having Asperger's, like, you know, being able to, you know, maintain my own independence when I do certain activities, you know, working at that point for five years and being in a position of management, traveling to all sorts of places around the world and, you know, do I have Asperger's? Yes. Does that stop me from doing things? No, of course it doesn't. And I, I felt so angry at this person that they had said these things and I felt the need to put them in their place and tell them otherwise, that I won't struggle with this. Even though I had st stuck up for myself, there was somebody who was close to this person who had also caught wind of what I've said to this person and basically threatened me as a result. And I just, that really played on my anxiety throughout that period. And if anything, I, I, I felt really mad that this person was like this. And ultimately, I, uh, as fate would have it, I am on speaking terms with this person now. We've managed to kind of like clear the air, but I am on speaking terms with this person. Um, the latter person, I mean. The third was during the Christmas period last year, and especially it was the week leading up to Christmas itself, in which I worked all the way from the 16th till the 24th, with one day off on the 22nd. Like, so basically eight, out, eight shifts in nine days, that was. I worked a delivery one night where the delivery was late, and me and my colleagues, we didn't get out until 1am, dealt with a few Karens, as you do in retail. And I worked two mornings, those being the 23rd and 24th of December, and I just remember feeling absolutely exhausted on both days. And it was also on the 23rd where we found out that our initial plan of moving up here to North Yorkshire had fallen through. And that put me in a very low mood, so I was... I was I was, I mean, we were all quite pissed off that, you know, our, our planned move up here had fallen through. I remember Christmas Eve being a low point in particular. Um, I worked earlier than usual that day, got up at 5am for my shift, and if I'm being completely honest, when I used to work mornings, I struggled to knock off, and, you know, I barely got any sleep as it was. So, yeah, I just went into that shift absolutely tired and just running on low energy and very little sleep. Um, we did a quick delivery that morning, and then a few hours later, while I was on my break, I had another breakdown um, in front of my boss as a result of just being exhausted and also just our moving plans falling through. I, I just felt really upset that everything was hap like, you know, that had happened. And I was ultimately looking forward to it, but just, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't fun. And as a result of me having this breakdown and like me just exhausted, I remember my boss sent me home early that day and just, you know, I was able to rest up for the remainder of the day. And like I've discussed this before, like, and I think just like overall, last Christmas was just like one year that I don't particularly look back with, on with like fond memories because of everything that was happening and I just felt really low during that period, um, and yeah, just wasn't easy. In March earlier this year, I handed in my notice and finished up my first tenure with the co-op in April ahead of me moving up here later that month, um, and after this, obviously, I was out of a job and I was on the lookout for something new, and, you know, I was able to line myself up with a few interviews. One such I remember having over the phone and I remember it got off to a good start, but it went sour, and I remember struggling through the questions, and I remember feeling really on edge, and, like, you know, trying to think, oh, how do I answer this question? And ultimately, as a result of this, I ended up having a panic attack, um, and I broke down after I hung up, because that... because... I, I, I didn't think, you know, I thought ultimately it was going to go my way, but it didn't. And I remember just hanging up and, you know, thanking the person, the interviewee. And, yeah, I was, I was besides myself, I was, because I just... 
you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to say to my parents, you know, the interview went really well, but ultimately I realised it hadn't gone well for me, and, and you know, I said, yeah, I was like, initially, I was like, yeah, it was alright, but then later that day, I remember just having a breakdown in front of them again, and telling them how I felt, and throughout this period as well, I remember having a few other interviews, but they were unsuccess unsuccessful, and I felt depressed at the feeling of not being able to land a new job. I was eventually successful in landing a new job, although I say new job, it was basically going back to what I was doing before, but ultimately I am now in my second tenure with the co-op in a new location and with a new team. I have experienced some rough patches um, since starting back up again in June. Um, mainly the readjusting aspect as well as some constructive feedback that I perceived as criticism and had another breakdown as a result of that in front of my new boss. Um, and relating back to having Asperger's, I sometimes experience unexpected mood swings which can be triggered by something being said to me or somebody's actions towards me. I experienced one of those during this breakdown and I was able to clear the air with my boss a few days after this had happened and ultimately one thing that really helped me through that as well was like you know I got some really nice feedback from not just her after this but also some feedback from our area manager um, he said some nice things about me so that that was quite reassuring and I would say as time has gone on I've ultimately built up my working relationships with my new colleagues and I feel a lot more comfortable in my current role as opposed to when I started again because I, I think that was another thing as well when I started up my role again I felt a little bit of pressure in the sense that you know I had some kind of like expectations you know you know to prove to my fellow um, colleagues in my position and making sure that you know I was doing everything up to scratch that I could and you know making sure everything I was doing was up to their standards but as I say as time's gone on I feel a lot more comfortable where I am now as opposed to where I was then. In September my Nana passed away after a third diagnosis of cancer and this time being terminal and since her passing I have really struggled in places like you know trying to process this and as a result of that I've been having on days and off days. Some days I'll be feeling fine and then some days I'd be feeling really low and just thinking about her. And I remember one such day was me getting in from work um, and I'd just worked my first lot of shifts since coming back from my holiday to Croatia and I had an emotional breakdown just thinking about her. I remember just sitting in the bath and then just suddenly suddenly just thinking about her. And I remember just speaking to friends that night and they offered me some really nice and reassurance and, you know, some helpful advice to help me through this. And I know I've talked about this already, but... I'm really thankful for the help through this period. Like, I'm really fortunate to have some family and friends who've been able to help me through some of these moments and to which I thank you for your kindness, your support, and your reassurance. Not everything's easy, but, and this whole process of, you know, going through my nana's passing, that hasn't been easy whatsoever. But, as I say, thank you once again. And I just remember some of the conversations that night I had with my friends, and, you know, again, they really helped me. But, I would say ultimately that I feel a lot more accepting after a funeral a few weeks ago. Um, but I do still tend to have the odd moment where, you know, I don't feel myself about everything. And there's no shame in that. I want to play a clip from when I went to go see Imagine Dragons a few years ago, um, in which the lead singer Dan Reynolds, before they performed Demons, um, talked about his struggles with mental health. In fact, it's three minutes long, but I'll play the clip here. I want to share just one uh, 
one thing with you tonight we've been sharing on this whole tour because I think it's important to talk about uh, in this day and age. There's a stigmatization on a lot of things, but one thing that I think is hurting our youth dramatically is telling them that they are broken. That if you suffer from depression or anxiety or you speak to a therapist, it makes you broken. Woo! This is false. You're not alone. You're not just sad. You're not putting on an act for attention. You, like many people in the world, are suffering from something that's very real and deserves help. I was diagnosed with depression many years ago, and I remember uh, sitting in an office and having someone tell me, you have severe depression, and, and then from there I didn't hear anymore because I kind of went numb. Because in my mind it symbolized everything that I had feared my entire life, which was that all these people in the world were complete, and here I was with a broken mind, and what, what was I to do with it? And uh, it makes me, <laughs> makes me proud to tell you that in that moment, I decided that it would be part of my journey, it'd be part of my story. I turned to art, I turned to music, I found true joy, I found true, true solace, and I found my way among a group of millions of people around the world. I have a therapist, he's incredible. If you or somebody is suffering from depression or you think you are, reach out, talk to somebody, talk to a therapist. It shouldn't be some scary word. You can go on to do all the things you ever want. Look at this. What am I doing? What the hell am I doing? I stand with you. I love you. I promise you that within the gray numbness, you know what I'm talking about. The gray numbness. You will see light, there will be a light, and you will take it and walk through the clouds, and you will find clarity, and there may be more clouds, and then you'll find clarity again, it'll be part of your life's journey, and I stand with you. Your life is always worth living. Never take Woo! it. Never, 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 never. Ultimately, my takeaway from that is that, you know, we do experience, you know, a few days of like, you know, grey areas and whatnot, you know, dark days, but then there are days where, you know, we'll, we'll experience clarity and have good days, and then, you know, maybe the cycle will repeat itself for some people, but ultimately, at the end of the day, there is always clarity and reassurance, and I want to reassure anyone who is going through a hard time to reach out and talk to someone, whether that be a friend, a family member, a therapist, or whoever you may find. Um, ultimately, you know, it's not, there's no shame in talking about these issues. If anything, it's raising awareness, and ultimately I want to do this video to raise awareness of some mental health issues and hopefully, fingers crossed, encourage people to do the same. I know there are people, as I say, who aren't willing to talk about these issues, and that's fine, there's no shame in that. But, you know, if I can help someone talk about their, if their issues, then, you know, it might trigger a process where, you know, more people are talking about it, and, you know, a whole range of people are talking about their issues. And as long as, you know, the awareness is there, then that's, that's the main thing as matters. That's what, you know, we focus on, the awareness. And ultimately what I want to say is, you know, life is special and always worth living. I mean, I think to myself with like, you know, some of the stuff I've done in my adult life, you know, traveling, going to events, you know, working and doing all sorts. Like, I feel proud of some of the stuff that I've done. 
and I know that there is all sorts that I'm yet to do in my life, but you know, those days will come and you know, I will I will make the most of it and as I say, I will have some dark days myself, but then I will find clarity again. And that's where I will end this video. Sorry, I didn't know how I wanted to transition that, but um, yeah, thank you for watching and I hope this video helps in spreading awareness. So that's my bit that I have to say and I will now leave you with some advice and especially with this video is always to enjoy yourself, stay safe and make the most of every opportunity that comes your way. Thank you for watching and peace.